You're watching the news on Bahrain International. I'm Hamid Shaban. Good evening. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa bid farewell to His Majesty King Abdullah II ibn Al Hussein of Jordan upon his departure from the kingdom from Al Sakhir Air Base. During his official visit, His Majesty King Hamad and His Majesty King Abdullah II discussed bilateral relations in addition to the latest regional and international developments. His Royal uh, Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, his sons, senior officials, the Ambassador of Jordan to Bahrain, and members of the Jordanian Embassy at the kingdom were present. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received at Sakhir Palace today the credentials of the newly appointed ambassadors of the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal, France, the Lebanese Republic, the United States of America, and the Republic of Sudan. The ambassador of the Federal Democratic Republic of Nepal, Padam Sondas, arrived at Al Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the Royal Protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The ambassador of France, Cécile Langer, arrived at Al-Sakhir Palace where she was welcomed by the head of royal protocol and an official ceremony was held for her. The newly appointed ambassador then presented her credentials to His Majesty the King as the ambassador of France. Welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty the King and the ambassador.
The ambassador of the Lebanese Republic, Dr. Milad Namour, arrived at the Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the Royal Protocol and an official ceremony was held for him. The ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King and welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The ambassador of the United States of America, Justin Hicks Sabero, arrived at Al-Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the Royal Protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King. Welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. The ambassador of the Republic of Sudan, Ibrahim Hamid Al Hassan Ahmed Saad, arrived at the Sakhir Palace where he was welcomed by the head of the Royal Protocol and an official ceremony was held for the ambassador. The newly appointed ambassador then presented his credentials to His Majesty the King as the ambassador of the Republic of Sudan. Welcoming speeches were exchanged between His Majesty and the ambassador. His Majesty exchanged with the new ambassador's welcoming speeches on the occasion, hailing the relations between Bahrain and their brotherly and friendly countries and their progress in all fields, wishing the ambassador success in their diplomatic duties of enhancing cooperation with the kingdom. The ambassadors conveyed the greetings of their country's leaders and their wishes of abundant health and happiness to His Majesty and of further progress and prosperity to the kingdom, commending the ties between their countries and Bahrain. Also present were the personal representative of His Majesty the King, the Minister of the Royal Court, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, the Minister of the Royal Court's follow-up, and the Chief of Royal Protocols.
Saudi's Royal Highness the Prime Minister Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa received today at Libya Palace the Ambassador of the United Arab Emirates to Bahrain, Abdul Rada Abdullah Al Khuri, where he handed His Royal Highness an invitation to attend the UAE National Day celebrations to be held at the embassy. His Royal Highness hailed the historic brotherly ties between Bahrain and the UAE, noting that these relations have established a strong relationship between the two countries' leaderships and people. His Royal Highness praised the continuous development of the bilateral ties thanks to the support of the country's leaderships. The Premier stressed that the region's countries work for the safety and security of their people and reject all foreign interventions and attempts to disrupt their peace. The Emirati ambassador condemned the terrorist attack that targeted a pipeline in the kingdom, affirming his country's support to the measures Bahrain takes to maintain its security and stability. He expressed thanks to His Royal Highness the Premier for his support to further develop bilateral relations, praising the visit of His Royal Highness to the Kingdom of Thailand. Under the patronage of the Commander-in-Chief of the Bahrain Defense Force, the BDF Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, an honoring ceremony was held today at the Royal Guards for BDF Special Operations Duty Force 14, who participated in Operation Restore Hope in the Republic of Yemen as part of the Arab Coalition Forces led by the Kingdom of Saudi Arabia. Upon arrival, the BDF Commander-in-Chief was received by the Minister of Defense Affairs, Lieutenant General Yusuf bin Ahmed Al Jalahma, the Chief of Staff of the BDF, Lieutenant General Diab bin Sagar Al Naimi, and the Commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Brigadier. General Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa. The anthem of the BDF Commander in Chief was played, and then Field Marshal Sheikh Khalifa inspected the military parade whose members lined up to greet him. The ceremony began with reciting verses from the Holy Quran. The National Guard commander then delivered the following speech. Sahib al Maali, Al Mujir al Rukun, Sheikh Khalifa bin Ahmed al Khalifa, Al Qaid al Aam, Likuwa al Dufa al Bahrain, Ashab al Saada, Al Ukhwa al Kiram, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Sayyidi, Nurahib al Maali, Kum Atiya Batarhif al Haras al Maliki, Kama Akadim al Maali, Kum Khalas al Shukr ala Tafadul Kum fi Hada al Yom, Litakrimi Hada hin Nukba. من أبطال قواتنا الباسلة قوة الواجب 14 الذين شاركوا أخوانهم في قوات التحالف العربي بقيادة شقيقتنا الكبرى المملكة العربية السعودية بالدفاع عن الدين والأرض والعروبة والكرامة بعد قيامهم بتسليم راية المجد والإقدام إلى قوة الواجب 15 التي حلت مكانهم في ميادين الرجولة والتضحية صاحب المعالي لقد وضع سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المفدى القائد الأعلى حفظه الله ورعاه الأسس والقيم والثوابت التي قامت عليها العقيدة العسكرية البحرينية المستمدة من عقيدتنا الإسلامية السمحة والتي ثوابتها إطاعة الله والدفاع عن الدين والإخلاص والولاء لجلالة الملك والانتماء للوطن والدفاع بدمائنا وأرواحنا عن أمنه وأرضه وحدوده برا وبحرا وجوا والحفاظ على المكتسبات والمنجزات الوطنية للدولة والشعب ونصرة الأشقاء في محيطنا الخليجي العربي وإن إيماننا المطلق بعقيدتنا العسكرية التي خطها سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة هي النبراس والمنهج القويم 
لكافة منسوبي قواتنا المسلحة منذ مرحلة التأسيس والبناء الأولى لقوة الدفاع البحرين والتي شارف بنائها على الخمسين عام من الإنجاز والعطاء والتضحية وفي الختام أدعو الله العزيز القدير أن يحفظ قائد مسيرتنا سيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة ملك البلاد المفدى القائد الأعلى سندا وذخرا للأمة العربية والإسلامية وأن يحفظ مملكتنا من كل سوء ومكروه كما تقدم بالشكر إلى سيدي صاحب السمو الملكي ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظ الله على دعمه وتوجيهاته المتواصلة لأبنائه في قوة الدفاع والشكر موصول لكم يا صاحب المعالي على جهودكم الكبيرة في تذليل كافة الصعاب في كل المهام المسندة لنا والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Then, the BDF Commander-in-Chief presented medals awarded by His Majesty the King to members of the BDF Special Operation Duty Force 14 in recognition of their dedicated services, high morale, professionalism, and discipline while performing their duties. The Commander-in-Chief voiced pride in the BDF Special Operation Forces officers, non-commissioned officers, and personnel for their outstanding participation in the operations of the Arab Coalition in line with the directives of the Supreme Commander, His Majesty the King, and within the Gulf Cooperation Council Joint Defense Agreement as well as the Joint Arab Defense Treaty. He lauded the servicemen of the BDF Special Operations Force for their dedication and courage while assuming their sacred patriotic duties, wishing them further victory along with their brethren in the Arab Coalition. The Commander-in-Chief conveyed to the honorees greetings from His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa. A number of senior BDF officers were also present. During the second day of the championship, the first deputy president of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, honorary president of the Bahraini Mixed Martial Arts Federation, and higher committee president of Brave Combat Week, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, stressed the importance of Bahrain's hosting a number of international tournaments as it contributes to enhancing Bahrain's position on the world sports map. His Highness also said that Bahrain's hosting of international tournaments is an ideal way to promote the name of the kingdom in the world as well as contribute to the advancement of the sports movement in Bahrain as a result of contact with with world players who will come to the kingdom. He said that Bahrain's hosting of the World Championships is a clear indication of the confidence of the international sports federations in the kingdom's ability to provide various factors of success to host the sporting events. His Highness referred to Bahrain's hosting of Brave Combat Week, saying that the Bahrain version is the best in all aspects. As for His Highness Sheikh Khalid reiterated his confidence in the national team fighters and said that Bahrain's team has strong competitors and they have the experience to compete for the titles of the championship. He called on fans to follow the World Championship and to enjoy the outstanding performance of fighters from all over the world.
Khalifa Sports City Hall witnessed the opening of the 16th round competitions after the preliminary round meetings. The third day of the 2017 IMAF World Championships saw 60 matches under the IMAF amateur MMA rules. The championships have been fabulous. Uh, I've been speaking to some of the uh, other team uh, presidents and team trainers and the athletes and everybody so excited and satisfied with uh, what they've seen, what they've experienced so far. So I would say that the championships have really exceeded everybody's expectations. It's amazing, it's a very high level guys that's here. We've seen the amateur championship grow over the years for the past four years, but this world championship has the toughest of the athletes that we are seeing. Um, we've seen a lot of uh, athletes. Now we can identify the athletes because they wear the gold jersey, so we know who were the champions of 2017, and we've seen a lot of them lose uh, with the gold jersey. So uh, that shows the level of competition with a lot of countries coming in, 51 countries this time, the largest amount of countries that has been participating in any competition for MMAF. That means higher competition, higher level, the best of the world is coming together, more countries, more talents. Um, so we're very happy that we, can, we are witnessing the upcoming, the future talents uh, here today. And I'm here to scout these athletes. Hopefully we find some good talents to take it to Brave in the future. Participating athletes are provided immediate high quality medical care with the availability of fully equipped clinics supervised by specialized doctors in various fields of orthopedics, ENT and injuries to ensure the safety of the participating athletes. After their match, they go on to a rigorous post-fight checkup where we check that all the fighters are medically fit to continue the fight and they have no health issues as a result of the fight, no traumas and they do not require treatment. In the instance where they require treatment, we have a team of more than 11 doctors on site, ringside physicians and the medical facility here, prepared for uh, administering treatment for these fighters. After the fight, if the fighter or the athlete requires any further assessment or further treatment, they are being transported by ambulance and other transport methods that we have available to the nearest medical facility. And we keep on monitoring the, uh, the athletes until they are safely discharged and back home. First of all, I want to thank uh, His Highness uh, Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad. Uh, he was with me, he was supporting me all the time uh, in the cage and the warm up area. And about the fight, it was tough fight, not easy fight, especially well, like we are fighting with the high level athletes. He gave me a hard time, especially in the first round. But in the second round, we, like, uh, I used uh, one jiu jitsu technique. He was using that in the training as well. Like every day, uh, we was in Chichina training, like uh, grappling and this stuff. And alhamdulillah, like, uh, I used this technique and I feel very happy and I'm ready for the fight tomorrow. The tournament continues to appear at a remarkable level, showcasing the preparations of the participating players who each strive to win medals and titles. Competition is rising as the world's largest combat sports celebration kicks off its 16th round competitions here at Khalifa Sports City. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Yasmin Ibrahim. His Royal the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, yesterday deputized Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa to attend the reception, marking the 50th anniversary of the Association of the Southeast Asian Nations, ASEAN, at the Gulf Hotel. The event, held by the Philippines Ambassador to Bahrain, Mr. Alfonso Aver, was attended by a number of senior officials, members of the diplomatic corps, and invitees. Sheikh Khalifa bin Rashid Al Khalifa and Sheikh Isa bin Ali bin Khalifa Al Khalifa extended the greetings of His Royal the Prime Minister to the Philippines' leadership, lauding the outstanding efforts extended to the host this important Asian meeting, wishing the Philippines and its people further progress in all fields. They also asserted the keen interest of Bahrain to enhance cooperation with ASEAN as the Kingdom believes in the importance of joint work in fulfilling the development aspirations of the countries and their people. They further noted the importance of ASEAN in the world economic movement. They praised the advanced level of the Bahraini-Philippines relations and their development in all fields, reflecting the strong, friendly bonds between the two countries' leaderships and people. For his part, the ambassador of the Philippines expressed his thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his efforts in developing bilateral relations, commending His Royal Highness's vision that supports the importance of enhancing economic ties between the GCC countries and ASEAN to serve mutual interests of both sides.
The Kingdom of Bahrain won the chairmanship of the World Heritage Committee, which came during the 21st meeting of the General Assembly of the countries participating in the 1972 World Heritage Convention. The convention was held on the 14th and 15th of this month at the headquarters of the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization, UNESCO, in the French capital, Paris. The World Heritage Committee also approved Sheikh Haya bin Trashid Al Khalifa as the committee's chairperson for the coming year. For this occasion, the president of the Bahrain Authority for Culture and Antiquities, BACA, Sheikh May bin Mohammed Al Khalifa, expressed her thanks to all who believed in Bahrain's ability to manage and preserve its heritage and history. She added that such victory proves to the world that the Arab region, despite the conditions it is going through, is capable of achieving global cultural achievements. Sheikh May went on to state that the leadership of the kingdom has been and continues to be the prime supporter of cultural work in Bahrain. She also affirmed that the appointment to Sheikh Haya bin Trashid Al Khalifa to chair the World Heritage Committee reflects the confidence and belief in the ability of Sheikh Haya to manage the 22nd session of the committee, which will be held in Bahrain next year. Sheikh May stressed that Bahrain would be ready to host the meeting of the World Heritage Committee, welcoming all the guests who will be familiarized with the long history of a human civilization dating back thousands of years.